On this episode of Project 1114, we're going to go ahead and replace the old timing belt and water pump on the Glock VR4. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for another installment of Project 1114. On this episode, we are going to remove that timing belt and water pump off this 4G63 Mitsubishi engine. It's quite a process as far as timing belt water pumps go, so I'm going to take you along for that. Try to be as detailed as I can. You will need some special tools, you'll see that along the way. But I'm pretty much following the tried and true methods of the VFAC for the DSM platform, which I've used for decade plus now, uh, doing these time about water pumps. So let's get in there, let's get this job taken out. It's a little easier with the turbo and exhaust manifold removed, which we did on the last episode. So why even put one of these cars back together without touching the time about water pump or hoping that it was done recently when you don't know. So chances are if you pick one of these up, this is some deferred maintenance that's waiting for you to get your dirty little hands on. Let's get in the garage, get some work done. All right, time to get access to that timing belt. Let's take the upper timing belt cover off. 10 millimeters. Yeah, a couple little metal bands showing, a little wear on the edges. But overall pretty good, no cracking or anything. But you know how that goes. You can't tell a timing belt's health just by looking at it, I'll tell you that. It can stretch a little bit. That's just the right firmness right there too. Good. Good, good, good. Now to take the rest of this stuff off so we can access it. All right. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is jack the engine up a little bit. Use a wooden support. Don't just put your jack underneath the engine and jack it up. Just to get this weight off of the engine mount because we're gonna remove this mount and the bracket. Here's a little peek at the accessory belts and pulleys on the Galant VR4. As you can see, there's a little bit of coolant. You can see some drops here. I'm uh, definitely going to find out that that water pump's leaking, I bet. I'll put money on that. But you can see I've already loosened this belt because this was on the power steering pump. I reckon that's an original Mitsubishi belt. How cool is that? Looks pretty dang old. Take all of this off. There's a couple tensioners. There's a tensioner bracket right up here you can barely see. That's near the alternator. You also can see if you have keen eyes that there's a new compressor, AC compressor back here. So this car has been upgraded to the newer style refrigerant. So it does have a modern working AC system, which is awesome. But yeah, just it's a tight squeeze, but we got we got some things to do back here. So priority is going to be getting all these belts off, taking off the harmonic balancer. You also want to take off the water pump pulley before you loosen all the belts. So you have that extra tension to help you break those bolts loose. And then under that, we'll get to the timing belt cover, the lower cover. And then we'll start working on our timing belt components. Let's get in there. All right, we're making some progress down in here. As you can see, you can see the water pump neck sticking out there. All the belts have been removed. The AC compressor pulley has been removed down there also, which you can see a gap down in there. So the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and pull that big old crank pulley off. As you can see it right there. Got the four bolts. I probably should have done that when I still had a belt on there, but that's okay. Those tend to spin off pretty good. All right, once you get your crank pulley off, you want to inspect the inside of it for cracks. It does crack around the rim here, and that's a pretty well-known failure point for these. It'd be a catastrophic failure if that occurs, so you want to inspect around, rotate it around. This one looks to be in fantastic shape. No cracks, no evidence of any stress or it's separating, so we're in a good spot with this one, guys. If yours is cracked, go ahead and replace it at this time with an OEM one. Time to remove the lower timing belt cover, which actually stretches all the way from your cam gears. Whoosh, all the way down here to where the crank comes out. So it's a pretty big cover and there are a ton of bolts to get out. Make sure you get them all out and then you should be able to drop the cover down. Lower timing belt cover. Once you remove way too damn many 10 millimeter bolts, let's go ahead and finally pull that timing belt cover. go. Lower timing belt cover. Now at this point in the game you're really going to want to find top dead center. Up top here's what you're looking for. 
You're looking for these two marks on the cam pulleys to line up. Also these pins right above the bolts should be pointing straight up. So we're good upstairs. Let's go check out downstairs. We got a few marks we're gonna be looking at up here. Let's see, don't mind the camera angle. So we're gonna look on the oil pump. The arrow is pointing straight to that mark, that little, it's definitely black and covered in oil, but that's a little point. Uh, if I adjust my camera angle, you'll see it's actually point on. Now on your crank pulley, you're looking for the pin that's sticking out to be pointed pretty much straight backwards on the car. There's also a reference point, and I'm really sorry, it's hard to get lighting in here, but you'll also see that little black arrow and you'll see a little cutout. You can barely see it where that pin lines up right under that bolt shiny brass bolt right there that's where we're looking there you go you see that little cutout in the backing plate where it lines up with that arrow that's exactly on and the last thing you need to make sure you're good on if you still have one is the balance shaft pulley there and that's gonna point right to that mark you can see that little notch straight across on the arrow at the end so we're good there also we are at top dead center on this engine Here's where things get interesting. This is the plug to access the tensioner pulley. You have to have a special tool that's gonna to go into where you pulled this plug from. So now this is the tool you'll be using. Pretty straightforward, it just kinda of screws in there. It's gonna take that tension away from the tensioner. You'll be able to slide your timing belt off. It's actually gonna go in from this side of the engine. Go in and you can just slowly tighten it in so you get that tension off the belt. And here's the tool down in there. It's kinda of hard to see because it's so dark, but you can see it kinda of running uh, right there where the light is, all the way into the tensioner pulley area. Okay, so this part is slightly annoying. As you can see here, you can see my 3 8 inch ratchet with some extensions and a swivel piece down in there, and that's on that special tool, pushing down. Now you do all of this after you loosen the center bolt on the tensioner pulley. Your goal is to get the tensioner mm, tightened down. You can see it nice and neat right there. You can see an Allen key hanging out of it. There's a hole in the arm and there's a hole in the body of that tensioner. So you have to get them to align so you can slide that key in. When you can do that, you know you're good to go. That's often called a grenade pin. It holds the tension in. So the timing belt should be slack once that's all the way in. So it takes a little bit of work to get to. Uh, just keep doing it until the holes align. You're able to slide your, and I use the little Allen key, all the way through. Now we can actually get under here You'll see the tension in the belt is now gone. We can slide that off with a crank pulley. There we go. Now our belt's loose. We can go ahead and remove that from the vehicle. You can see I made timing marks on the belt and that'll help. I'll transfer those onto the new timing belt to have alignment marks so I can put it on in the right place. All right, the next step in this process is to remove the actual crank bolt. Pull off the little gear here and that's gonna allow us to get access to our teeny balance shaft belt. You can see right there, pretty easy to replace that. So we'll take all that off, but before I move forward, I'm actually gonna do some cleaning because it is pretty gnarly up there. And I wanna do that before I put that shiny new water pump on. So that's actually- All right, next up is to remove that water pump. So we can see it uh, lurking back there. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. There's five bolts and then it has a water neck that goes around the front there that there is a rubber O-ring on, so you wanna make sure you catch that. Okay, here we go, let's undo this water pump and put the new one in. Well, you have to actually remove the tensioner and another bracket to get access to it, but then the water pump can be pried off. It takes a little bit of wrestling for sure. And then the unit will pop off. It's kinda of hard to get it off that water neck that's in the front, but it'll eventually go. Time to throw the new water pump on. Don't forget this O-ring right here that connects to this cross pipe in the front. Very important to get that bad boy. So go ahead, pop the old one off, pop the new one on, slide on the water pump and we should be good. Okay, next we're gonna be doing the balance shaft belt. So you can see the belt here. Here's the tensioner pulley for that. Super easy setup here. So on my other Galant VR4, my 92, that was a fully built, modified example. I did have that deleted. So fun thing here is I don't have to use the Gates balance shaft belt. I actually have an OEM Mitsubishi left over from when I did the timing belt on that car. So I'll just throw that on there. It's real easy taking this thing off. Obviously the big thing's gonna be the crank bolt. We're gonna try to take that off with an electric impact. 
and then probably a breaker bar. The gear itself actually slides off pretty good on these 4G63s. It's not like some cars that can be very hard. You need to use a gear puller. It should slide off pretty easy. Now to reinstall everything and torque it back to spec without the engine getting out of top dead center, you are gonna need a couple tools. You can purchase these online. Uh, it is something to hold that crank bolt in place. So it's specially shaped. You can put the screws back in. You can see how they align and you can brace it so it won't go in either direction, whether you're tightening or loosening. It's a very handy tool. Basically, a super essential tool that you will need to do this job. Because what happens is when you try to torque down the bolt, the engine will turn no matter what you do to stop it. You can use something to break the wheels from spinning, to jam something in between the wheel studs kind of works sometimes, but this is a good way to do it. So that tool is helpful. Let's go ahead, take that balance shaft belt off. First thing we're gonna hit it with is our handy dandy electric impact. It's a 22 millimeter. Well, that was zero fun. I looked over and I was talking to a camera that had run out of battery. So what you missed was just putting on that new balance shaft belt and new pulley. Pretty simple stuff there. And we missed the water pump, which is not super exciting. Uh, one of the most challenging things about this water pump design is it is just a regular kind of flat gasket. It doesn't fit. It isn't a rubber one that doesn't go into the water pump itself. So it is tricky to hold it in while you're installing. So make sure you use a little bit of RTV to secure the gasket to the water pump. That saves you a lot of headache. Also, it is a pain in the butt to kind of get down there and get in. And you have to make sure, and you remember we already put our new O-ring on, but this water pump has this cross tube right here that goes across the front of the engine. Make sure this gets tightened in nicely as you're securing the water pump. It's time to put on a tensioner and idler pulley, and then go ahead and get ready for that timing belt to go back on. Here's our tensioner pulley ready to go back in. You can see it's all mounted up. New pulley mounted to all the hardware. We're gonna bolt that in. We also wanna put in our new idler pulley right here at the same time. So we'll get both of those in right now. See how well this new timing belt goes, huh? You need zip tie too. I find that these clamps work pretty dang good. Installing the timing belt is actually quite straightforward in this application. I started with the intake side, clamped it on, put the exhaust side. Now this exhaust side likes to move guys, just so you know. So I actually put a little counterclockwise pressure on it to pull the tension and then slide the belt on. Another good thing, and this is a long history of doing timing belts on various cars, is to count the teeth between where the cam sprockets are, and that way you always have a general rule of thumb of where you need to be. Marking the belts is good, but I just like to count that as an extra security measure. So it's 15 teeth between the timing marks on both the pulleys, in case you guys are following at home. And you wanna run that all the way down through everything else. Let me go underneath and show you. So we've got the belt routed in the correct order. You can see it coming down there. Uh, make sure all your timing marks, which mine are good, are still good to go. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is take your tensioner pulley. We're gonna loosen that up and then slide that against the timing belt to put pressure on. Loosen that bolt. After so the next step's interesting. We've gone ahead and tightened our tensioner. So that should be good to go. What we're actually gonna do next is remove these clips. Take it back counterclockwise, the crank bolt and that's gonna rotate the engine counterclockwise a quarter of a turn. And then we're gonna go ahead and put that back to top dead center. So it should keep our timing marks. You always wanna double check every time you move everything. All right, time to take the training wheels off. We're gonna rotate the crank a quarter turn counterclockwise. Set it back to top dead center. Just line your marks up again. We're all set down here, everything's lined up. Now we do it upstairs. Oh, so sweet it hurts. God, I love that feeling when all the marks line up on a timing belt job. Woo, feels good. So you can see our tensioner pulley down there it has two little holes to the left side of it, which you need a special tool to tighten it down correctly to get the right inch pound setting on. So next step is you're gonna loosen that center bolt and then use the special tool. And this is what the special tool looks like. Nothing too crazy. 
two little holes that will line up with that tensioner pulley and then a quarter inch drive on the back. Now you want to hook this to your beam style torque wrench and that's because you're going to set this to a specific torque setting when you tighten that pulley and then lock that center nut again and that ensures your timing belt isn't over tensioned. Pretty cool, another specialty tool. There are a few specialty tools which you've noted uh, so far in the video I've shown you guys, but this is one you definitely need too. So we're gonna go ahead, loosen that center bolt, use this tool, torque it to the right settings, and then we should be good. So with the torque setting on the tensioner pulley accurate, we're gonna use our other favorite special tool again to go ahead and relieve the pressure on our hydraulic tensioner. That way we can pull the grenade pin and get the tension set correctly. Let's slowly screw it in all the way down and we can pull that pin and back it out and it should set the correct tension. All right, with the tensioner tool all the way in, it's time to pull the grenade pin. That Allen key we used up here, let's pull it out. Boom, grenade pin removed. Nothing dramatic, kind of a bummer. Just kidding, probably the best thing ever. <laughs> we don't want any drama right now. So let's go ahead and back out that tool again and then we're gonna rotate the engine six times to make sure we're good to go. Now we're gonna come down to the crank again and rotate the engine six times. And this should take all the slack out of the system. So let's go ahead, rotate it six times, triple check our alignment marks afterwards and make sure the belt is tight in all the right places. All right, after doing the six rotations, double, triple, quadruple check your timing marks if everything's still good. And go ahead and put this rubber plug back in where you entered that special tool. And then it's time to start reassembling everything. That means timing covers and all that fun stuff. Okay, time to put all this hardware and componentry back onto the car. And in case you were wondering, we have quite a bit to do. This is why organization is key doing a task like this. Now it's time to cover up all our beautiful artwork with this plastic timing belt cover. Make sure you use the right length bolts. There's different bolts all over this thing and if you laid them out smartly, it should be an easy task putting it all back together. It's like I'm looking at crime seat evidence in these baggies. Time to install the crank pulley, those four bolts. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Also, if you're not wire brushing all your hardware when you're reinstalling, then what are you even doing here? Nice and clean. And there's our crank pulley back on the car. And we are making progress reassembling this thing. Now it's time to install our AC tensioner and the new AC belt. So we'll go ahead and slap down the engine. It's been cleaned up a little bit. Remember, another fun thing to know is when you're installing the AC tensioner to put the belt on at the same time because it actually has to be installed underneath the tensioner. It's kind of interesting. You can see it running down there. You can see the tensioner right there. Uh, in that area, you can see the belt, how it goes around at the bracket. Something to be very much aware of when you're going to install. All right, we've got the water pump pulley installed. I forgot how much a pain in the butt it is because it is that two-piece unit with the power steering pulley on the back of it and trying to line all that up with the little notch and then trying to get those bolts in, which is a really tight spot. So I forgot how much fun that was. Good times. So have fun with that. Once you get that all snugged up, you probably want to revisit these bolts after two to get them to torque spec after you get a belt on there. That way you have that tension to work against. If not, the pulley's just going to want to keep moving. So not a bad idea to come back and revisit that. 